Church discipline. What comes to your mind when you hear that word discipline? <clears throat> huh? Behavior. Behavior? Whose behavior? People. <clears throat> People. And okay, it's really easy to point the finger and say, well, they need to be disciplined, right? <laughs> But what about me? <coughs> How many of you enjoy being disciplined when you're going through that? Anybody? I remember <coughs> growing up as a kid, we had this thing called the Board of Education. And those of you who are old enough will know what that was. In fact, some schools had ones that had holes yeah. drilled through the board to give a little more wind that gave a little more pain when they applied the uh, Board of Education to the seat of... Dominion. What was it? The column? Yeah, no, I was just joking. I said seat of Dominion. Understanding. The seat of understanding. Yeah. <laughs> now, I'm raising my hand. I've had the Board of Education applied to my seat of understanding. <laughs> Anybody else want to raise your hand? You you had it, don't Tori. I thought you were an angel. <laughs> no, I still have one of those from when my mom was a little girl. Oh, is that right? We have all of our names are on it. Oh, cool. <laughs> Jeannie never had to worry about that, right, Jeannie? Yes, that's perfect. You are perfect. And there's that halo. Yes. You know, when I sometimes when I when I uh, go behind someone, you know, I I, I do this. You got a halo over your head. <laughs> so we're going to talk about church discipline today. Wow, she's quick. I forgot to put a nice slide on for our title, Church Discipline. So I want you to remember, last week was what? The, ser the sermon was about spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts. And, and now we're going to... Um, of course, each one, and it was really neat how when we shared uh, what your spiritual gift is, um, some people were kind of surprised at, at what other people said about their spiritual gift, and then when they kind of contemplated or mulled it over, they realized that they were speaking some truth into that. And let's continue to do that. It's encouraging each other to, to exercise their spiritual gifts because when the body of Christ does that, that is when the church will grow. So let's just go to the scripture first of all. Um, there's a precursor or something that comes before talking about spiritual gifts. That is uh, about the leadership of our congregation. Now, I was trying to find out because I know we're getting pretty close to being uh, having our first birthday as a uh, break for Agape Fellowship. <clears throat> and um, actually, the first PowerPoint presentation I could find on the computer was April, I think, 5th. So we're getting pretty close to celebrating one year being uh, a congregation. So, Let's go into 1 Timothy 5th chapter, and it says the word elders, but I think uh, for some of us, the word elders brings about um, some bad memories, or mm -hmm. what's that? Mm -hmm. Oh, huh. <laughs> and, and so... <laughs> I'd like to use the word because some, some people misunderstand. I'm not saying that the Bible had a wrong way of saying elders, but I'm saying that what I would like to use is the word shepherd. Because as we read in the scriptures about a shepherd, a shepherd is not one that has got a whip out and is whipping the sheep, sheep into shape. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and some elders want to do that. They want to rule with uh, iron fists. You do as I tell you or else. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So, so I'd like to 
<laughs> kind of use this word shepherd because this is what the original meant is that the elder is supposed to have a shepherd type of uh, personality. One that cares for his sheep. And of course, who is the good shepherd? Mm -hmm. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. And, and he even gives the illustration where the shepherd, um, when there's a hundred sheep and there's one missing, he leaves the, the sheep in the fold where it's safe and goes out to find that one lost sheep. Now, that lost sheep is probably the one that needs to be disciplined, right? And, and, and maybe if you've ever been a lost sheep before, and you've been a lost sheep, you know, you, you were in the fold, and then you kind of wandered off, and you needed someone to come back and bring you back into the fold, and I think the sheep sometimes is too afraid to come back to the fold because they did one thing too many times and they have the concept, I am not worthy or I don't deserve to be forgiven. And so I'm going to stay away. So that's why it's important for the, for the shepherd to go out and seek that lost sheep and bring them back into the fold. So now with that concept in mind, as, as I read this, when, I, when you hear the word elder, okay, think of a shepherd, a, a loving person that is desiring to do what is best for the sheep. So the elder who leads well are to be considered worthy of double honor. In other words, the, the elders or the church leaders need to be respected. And, and I, I thought about how many different people that we've ministered to, and, and in, in this community, I know there are people that we call them church hoppers. They, they go from one church to another, mm -hmm. and they don't stay into one particular church. Do you know why that is? And, and the ones that I'm thinking about right now is they come to me for help or come to the elders for help and, and we give them instruction from the word on how they're supposed to live their lives but they don't like what we tell them so they go somewhere else because they don't want to change their life and be free. If you look through scriptures, the reason why there's rules there, or commandments, or precepts, what do you want to call them? They're in there to protect you from harm. Now, I, I just talked to uh, Anna the other day, and she was, uh, she said that Maya was trying to put his hand into the boiling water. Mm. I said, oh, why didn't you just let him do that? <laughs> He learned really quick <laughs> that he shouldn't do that, right? So she's scolding him and saying, do not put your hand in there. And of course, the child throws a tantrum because he wants to put his hand in the water. Now, how many of you have experienced that before? Either you being the child or you being the parent. Mm -hmm. You want to protect the child from harm. Well, you can put it in a shepherd's position that's trying to protect his flock, right? And, and the person wants to go out and just have one drink. But he says, no, that's not good for you, right? And so the, the person goes out, the sheep <laughs> goes out and just say, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Well, I don't want to listen to him. I want to do my own thing. So he goes out, and what happens? Takes a drink, and another one, and another one, and another one. And pretty soon he doesn't know when to stop, right? And the next morning, he's kneeling at the throne. Now, I'm not saying at the throne of God. You know what throne I'm talking about. 
He's over there puking himself out because he just had too many drinks. And so when you, when you think about the relationship between the shepherd and the sheep, remember those um, examples. So what I want to say is the double honor is respect. Now, you may not like the personality of the person that is trying to be the shepherd, but if he is placed among the leadership of the congregation, he deserves your respect. Especially those who work hard at preaching and teaching. For the scripture says, you shall not muzzle the ox while it is treading, and the laborer is worthy of his wages. Do not accept an accusation against an elder except on the basis of two or three witnesses. Those who continue in sin rebuke in the presence of all so that the rest also will be fearful of sinning. Now that's something that you don't see too much happening is rebuking someone for their sin in front of everybody. I don't know how that would work out. I mean, you might not have anybody left if you embarrass somebody in front of everybody. But there's something here that we maybe the reason that somebody may not come back again is because they don't like to be disciplined. But if we don't correct a person doing the wrong thing, are we really loving them? with the love that God has? No. Because the, the point of being a Christian, right, is to be able to cast your burdens upon Him because He cares for you and, and to help that person to grow in maturity in Christ Jesus. And if we let that person does, do whatever they want to do, then the, the leaders of the congregation is not doing what God has called us to do. So you see how important it is for the sheep to respect those that are over them? I solemnly exhort you in the presence of God and Christ Jesus and His chosen angels to maintain these principles without bias, doing nothing in a spirit of partiality. In other words, you're going to be either all in or you're going to be all out. Now, I, I kind of, when I'm hearing myself say this, I go, man, I hope these guys <laughs> come back next week. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because when you give correction from the Word of God, you know that that's the right thing but yet, we don't want to lose people. Isn't that like the parent who, who, oh, I don't want my child to stop loving me, so I'm going to let them do whatever they want. I just don't understand it nowadays. These kids, second, third graders, with these expensive thousand dollar cell phones. Why do they have them? And the parent gives the excuse, well, <coughs> They need to be able to get a hold of me. Well, give them a flip phone. <laughs> I mean, if you have a thousand dollars where you can go buy cash for that phone, I still don't agree with doing that, but because you're kind of spoiling the kid, and the uh, scripture does say, spoil the, what is it? Spare the rod, spoil the child, and all that. But the thing is, when we do not do what is necessary to correct a person in sin and we just allow them to continue in their sin, are we as the leaders of the congregation fulfilling our responsibility to God because He's the ultimate leader over us and He has placed the leadership to take care of the flock? to shepherd the flock. So he says, 
Do not lay hands on, upon anyone too quickly and thereby share responsibility for the sins of others. Keep yourselves free from sin. In other words, the leadership, you don't just go find anybody who just steps in doors, and, and I've heard this done before, because maybe the lack of an elder in a congregation. Oh, you, I, I heard this statement once, that this is just actually true, that they say, oh, anybody can be an elder, all you have to do is be willing. <laughs> now, if, if someone came in and, and um, maybe it was uh, sleeping around the community and everybody knew about it, and you made that person an elder, what's going to happen? <laughs> that's not a good example. And people are going to say, well, if that's the way, well, maybe I want to go to that church because I want to do the same thing. Yeah. You see? And, and so the, the leader or the shepherd needs to be held on a high standard. In other words, they're not a new Christian, but has to have maturity in Christ. I'm not going to say they have to be sinless. I mean, how many leaders, how many elders, or how many shepherds that you know out there in any church are sinless? Well, you're not going to find leaders to serve if that's the qualification. But when it says free from sin is that they have exercised control to the point where they are trying their best to live a godly life. In Titus it says, a bond, Paul a bond servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ for the faith of those chosen of God and the knowledge of the truth, which is according to godliness in the hope of eternal life, which God who cannot lie, promised long, long ages ago, but at the proper time revealed his word in the proclamation in which I was entrusted according to the commandment of God our Savior. To Titus, my true son in common faith, grace and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Savior. For this reason I left you in Crete that you would set in order what remains and appoint elders in every city I directed you. Namely, if any man is beyond reproach, the husband of one wife, having children who believe, not accused of indecent behavior or rebellion. For the overseer must be beyond reproach as God's steward, not self-willed, not quick-tempered, not overindulging in wine, not a bully or greedy for money, but hospitable, loving what is good, self-controlled, righteous, holy, disciplined, holding firmly to the faithful word which is in accordance with the teaching, so that he will be able to both uh, able both to exhort in sound doctrine and to refute those who contradict it. You see, the, the, the job of the shepherd is to make sure that false doctrine don't come into the church. Mm -hmm. And I, I've seen it before where, where, where somebody come in, and I remember I was visiting a, uh, one of our neighbor churches in Hawaii, and this guy comes in and he says, my name is Malachi, and I'm a prophet. And he started going on and on, and someone stood up and said, you know what? <laughs> Just sit down with you and be quiet. You can't let false doctrine come into church. I remember again when we were at our home church and we were having an explosion. We were ministering to the surfing community, and we were having a night where there was this band. <coughs> they called themselves Pupakea Pickers. That this song sound like a bluegrass band. And they started playing this song. And you know that song that says, um, uh, and I took her upstairs for a ride. <laughs> down the corner, out the street. <laughs> you know, and, 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 and you know what it means, right? By taking her upstairs for a ride. I mean, the pastor of the church got up and he says, Okay, you gotta stop. You gotta stop.